In this video we'll be building a stylish desktop volume knob which, besides looking really cool, allows you to finely control the loudness of your music in a tactile way. As you can see, the knob itself is made out of concrete, so feels pretty solid. The design is also completely customizable, so you can match it to your desk setup. Here for example I used plexiglass for the base, and added an LED to give it a ring glow, which looks really cool. Right, so the first thing we'll work on is the base. You can use a variety of different materials for this, and in my case I'm using a piece of 12mm thick oak. To cut out the base we'll need a special hole cutter bit. This can be adjusted to cut out a circle with the size of your choosing, and it's pretty inexpensive. Once you're about halfway through the wood with it, flip it over and begin cutting from the other side. This gives you a cleaner cut, though it's still pretty jaggy so we need to give it a sanding down. To do this we'll get a bolt that fits perfectly inside the central hole, and then clamp it in place with the nut and washer. We can now lock this into a drill and spin it over some sandpaper until it's perfectly smooth. If you give it some time it can look really good. Now what we need to do is get a bit that matches the size of the potentiometer we'll be using, which in most cases should be 18mm. This potentiometer by the way is what actually adjusts the volume, and I'll be covering it in more detail in just a sec. This bit can then be carefully used to expand the central hole to make room for the potentiometer's body. However, as there are pins to one side, we need to use a coping saw to make room for them. After you've done this, the potentiometer should now fit snugly inside the base. All we've got to do now is cut a groove for the wires to be threaded through later. The easiest way to do this is to use the coping saw to cut completely through. However, as my oak platform is thick enough, I thought I'd take the opportunity to try using a router, which is a tool I've actually not used that much. This is just a cheap one I'm borrowing, so it should represent what you guys can also do at home. After securing my base in place using the wood it was cut from and some double sided tape, the first step was to adjust the height of the bit so it protruded about a millimetre. I then carefully slid the bit between my marks, with the router faithfully carving it out for me. The bit was then lowered another millimetre, and the cut deepened a little more. This was repeated until it was 6 millimetres deep. So whether you use a router or just a coping saw, the base should now be complete. One thing we'll do before we move on however, is place it upside down onto a thin piece of cardboard and mark and cut out an identical shape, with a rough hole in the middle. This will later be used as a spacer when it's time to add the concrete. Now we can start working on wiring it up, which brings us back to the potentiometer. As audio is usually stereo, we'll need one that is dual gang, meaning that there are two stacked potentiometers in a single unit. It also needs to be linear, rather than logarithmic, and have a value of 500 ohms. As these are a little tricky to find, I've placed links to a suitable one in the description. Now to transport the audio signal, we'll need a USB cable. Yep, <laughs> it doesn't really matter what connections it has on either end, as these need to be chopped off so we can access the wires inside, but the fact that the USB cables have 5 individual wires makes them perfect for this project, as we need to transport the audio both to and from the volume knob. So after trimming the wires, we need to group them into two sets so that we can wire them up correctly later. Here I'm grouping white with red for one audio channel, and black with green for the other audio channel. The ground wire can just be left on its own. These are now ready to solder to the potentiometer. So with the shaft facing upwards, the rightmost pin is the audio input, the middle pin is the audio output, and the pin on the left is the ground. This applies to the bottom set as well, only they're on a separate circuit. So we'll solder the first set of wires to the topmost pins, with red on the input and white on the output. We can do the same for the bottom pins, only this time using the black wire for the input and the green wire on the output. The ground wire can then be soldered to both the top and bottom pins on the left. With that wired up we can now add the audio connectors, but before we do that we can decorate the wire with some braided sheathing. This stuff is really inexpensive and is available in a variety of different colours. I'm going to go with a muted yellow colour to be somewhat colour coordinated with the base, but you can go with anything you like. 
To fit it over the cable, we'll first chop off the other end and then feed it all the way along the wire until it's 2cm away from the potentiometer. We can then chop off any excess from the other end. As this sheathing is liable to fray, however, we just need to seal it by melting it slightly with a match. Now we can shift it down to reveal the wire a little, pushing it right the way up the potentiometer on the other side in the process. Now we can slide on some heat shrink to use later. Don't forget to do it at this stage because we can't add it after we've soldered on the connectors. Now we can separate the individual wires into the same grouping we used earlier, so white with red and black with green. As you can see, I've cut the white and green wires slightly shorter to help avoid short circuits with their adjacent pair. Now we need to get a headphone extension cable. It doesn't need to be long, but I do recommend going for something of reasonable quality, because cheap ones tend to break quite easily. So after chopping it exactly in half, we'll get the male connector and expose its wires. These can then be soldered to the red and black wires, which, if you remember, are the wires we soldered to the input pins on the potentiometer. Once that's done, we can get the female connector and solder this one to the white and green wires instead, which this time go to the output pins on the potentiometer. When you do this, make sure that you solder the same colour wires of the headphone extender to the USB wire sets, so that the audio channels don't get flipped. As you can see, because the wires are at slightly different lengths, it's impossible for them to touch and short out. So after wrapping them each in electrical tape, the last thing to do is connect all of the ground wires together. This too can have electrical tape wrapped around it, and then we can slide up the heat shrink we added earlier and carefully use a match to shrink it around the cables. Once that's done, the potentiometer can be glued inside the base using some epoxy. When you do this, make sure that there's no chance of the glue entering the small gaps in the sides of the potentiometer, which would damage it, and also that the shaft is perfectly vertical whilst it sets. Once it has set, it's time to add the concrete, which is where this build gets particularly fun. The first thing we can do is add our cardboard spacer, and then wrap the whole thing in cling film to stop any moisture from reaching the wood. We can now mould some blue tack around the potentiometer shaft so that, again, moisture is prevented from seeping down inside. Once that's done, we can get some thin flexible plastic, like a piece of laminated paper or something from product packaging, and stick it to the perimeter of the base using some tape, which gives us a mould into which we can add the concrete. For this, we'll need some sand, cement, and a container to mix it all in. We'll do a 2 to 1 mix, so for every 2 spoons of sand we use, we can add 1 spoon of cement. As we don't need that much of it, 8 spoons of sand and 4 spoons of cement should do the trick. Once it's all mixed together, we can begin adding the water. Be very careful with this, as it doesn't want to be too sloppy. Try and get it to the consistency shown here. Now it's important that the mould remains perfectly level whilst the cement dries, so we can put it on top of a cup so that the cling film doesn't get in the way. The cement can now be added, using a spoon to prod it into the corners. You need to add enough of this so that it comfortably covers the potentiometer shaft. Now we can give it a bit of a tap to level it off. As the plastic might not be keeping perfectly circular, however, you may want to insert a disc that's the same size as the base to keep it in line. Here I used a base from a previous attempt. Now optionally, if you'd like to have the top have a super smooth finish, you can place another piece of plastic down on top whilst it dries. The difference this makes is quite significant to the final look, as it can trap air bubbles and make it look more interesting. Without the plastic it looks more like stone, so just choose the style you prefer. Either way, once it's set we can peel back the plastic to reveal its sides. Now we can carefully pull it off, as we've got to remove the blue tack from the bottom and the cling film and washer from the base. Now we can glue the knob back in place using some epoxy. However, to stop it from dripping down the shaft and making it stiff, we'll do this upside down. Also, don't forget to add another piece of thin cardboard between the wood and concrete so that it all dries level. Now all that's left to do is try it out. So we can plug the audio jack into an audio source, in my case a computer, and then plug speakers or headphones into its audio socket. 
The volume of the source can then be set to maximum, which gives us the most volume range to work with, and then it's ready to use. Now it really does work a treat, and evenly controls the volume from minimum to maximum when used with either headphones or speakers. Now feel free to use different materials too. You don't have to use hardwood for the base, for example. You could use some MDF and then paint it. You could even use some plexiglass like I did here, although you'll need to cut this with a CNC router as it won't be that easy to get a good finish by hand. You could even add an LED for some illumination. If you want to do this, it's just a case of gluing an SMD LED face down and then running two extra wires in parallel with the audio cable. The other end of these can then have a resistor added, the value of which can be calculated with an online calculator, and then they can be soldered to the red and black wires of a spare USB cable, making sure that the polarity is correct. When plugged in, the LED should light up whenever the computer is on. Whatever you choose to do, I hope you have a good time building one, as it's really fun working with concrete like this and it's great to show to your friends. So that's it for this video, I hope you've enjoyed it and as usual don't forget to hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing if you haven't already. Other than that, I'll see you next time, bye for now.